Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Lisa's Coloring Corner. I just recently purchased this book on Amazon. It is called Love Colored Pencils. It is by Vivian Wong. And initially, no, I was not going to buy this book because it says how to get awesome at drawing an interactive draw in the book journal. And I'm like, uh, no, not for me. I do not want to learn how to draw. I am not an artist. I am a colorist and I'm very simplistic at coloring at best. I, you know, I don't do anything fancy. I just like the easy peasy stuff. But then I actually seen what was all in this book and I'm like, mm, yeah, that looks interesting. So is this cover not gorgeous, first of all? Love it, love it, love it. I want to kind of maybe take some inspiration from some of this and maybe apply it to uh, when I color with pencils, you know, all the time, right? Yeah, it says on the back, a big tin of colored pencils, a sheet of paper. Now what? It uh, just says, meet talented artist Vivian Wong. Vivian and her huge following of happy coloristas are taking colored pencil art to the next level by creating luscious drawings that zing off the page. <laughs> With her expert guidance, you too can realize the true potential of this, of this wonderful, soft, blend blendable medium. Blah, blah, I can't talk. Look over her shoulder and copy her methods as she creates subjects in a style that will engage younger artists, learn how to blend, crosshatch, and graduate colors, and then have a go yourself using the interactive pages provided. So yeah, now when you read that, it really sounds like, oh, she's going to teach me how to draw. I don't want to draw. But no, that is not just what this book is about. So... Let's go ahead and look at this. So we do have a flap that opens in the front. And oh, isn't that pretty? Title page. And kind of a double spread title page. Is this not gorgeous? Look at that hair. Oh, and that cute little pug. <laughs> So here is the contents. Now, chapter one is tools and techniques. Chapter two is how to color. And she goes through the eyes, noses, lips, skin, and hair. So it tells you how to color all those things. Then chapter three is my favorite things. She goes through feathers, fur, and flowers. The beginning is all about um, holding your holding your pencil and pressure, you know how how the pressure of your pencil makes things look different and hatching, cross hatching, stippling, scribbling, blending. Her go to colors: color mixing, knowing the color spectrum, what is tone, and bringing it all together. So she really isn't teaching you how to draw. She is actually teaching you how to use colored pencils and and getting you know that that whole process and procedure down and actually how to color not how to draw so to me that was a little misleading because yeah it's like draw I don't want to draw <laughs> so here is Vivian she is a very young gal very talented young gal born and bred in Hong Kong began drawing at a very young age Attended art lessons from the age of five. Wowee. Um, so yeah, goes on to um, talk about things about the artist. Then we get into these and you can see they're full colored pages, which I always really like. And just gives some little blurbs about each of these pictures and about her. And some more. And I am not going to go through each of these. I'm going to read these on my own. Then chapter one is tools and techniques. So here we have tools and materials. Talks about colored pencils, a blending stump, sketchbooks and paper, and a sharpener. Oh, that is stunning. Wow. Here we have holding your pencil. 
how it looks if you hold it normally perpendicular, sideways, and when your finger is closer or farther back, depends on, you know, will we'll give you how much pressure is on that pencil. Here it talks about the pressure, and we kind of know that, like for myself, when I'm blending with my Prismacolors, I start out with very hard pressure, and then I go lighter and lighter. Then when I come in with my next color, you know, you can blend over the top of where you went lighter with the previous color, and that's how you get that really nice, pretty blend. So she's talking about the pressure of the pencil. Then you have a practice page yourself where you can do what she's talking about over there. So she has all these try yourself um, pages. Here she's talking about hatching different types of, you know, hatching is lines. Um, sometimes you can color with just a bunch of lines together or cross hatching, which I'm assuming is up next. Yes, cross hatching. You go in one direction and then you come back with the others. Here we have stippling where you're coloring with dots. Of course, it'll be lighter if you have the dots farther apart versus closer together. And you can see how it looks like it's shading then when you have them closer together. And you can blend it with different colors then. So stippling is a, another um, type of coloring that you can do. It's just teeny little dots. Then you have your scribbling method. I've never been, you know, I've never really done that a whole lot, but... Um, we do, you know, many times we do color in little circles, but um, I don't make it so that it's actual lines. It's when I'm trying to blend colors together. And here we actually get into blending, which I know I've been asked questions of already, especially when you're talking about blending versus layering, you know, and, and what differences and stuff are. So here she goes through all of the different blending, um, overlapping the colors, blending with a white pencil, using the blending stump, and then a damp cotton swab. Dampen a cotton swab with water and gently go over the colors using a circular motion. Never heard of doing it with water. How does that work on a wax-based pencil? Hmm, interesting. <laughs> Never heard of that. All right. Then her go-to colors. The 12 colors featured here are my touchstones when it comes to drawing. These two pages illustrate some possible combinations of the colors. There is a range of warm colors, which include hues of red and yellow, and cool colors, which include hues of blue, blue-green, and blue-violet. Red and blue are my ultimate favorite, so I have included a few different shades. I definitely have a preference for bold and pigmented colors. And then she goes through some things about that. Here is a sample of a lot of the colors that she likes together. So you can get a lot of inspiration from that page. That is one busy page, isn't it? <laughs> and then you can try it yourself. It says, use this page to create your own color combinations, and then you can apply it to this coloring page. So that's kind of neat. Now in here, so many people have asked me, and I know it's been asked of many other colorists, how do you know what colors to pick and put together? And um, there are so many references out there, but this is another one. <laughs> it tells you how to create new colors from your primary colors. Um, so if you take like a primary color, put something down over the top of it to create another color. Um, here's original colors. Um, blue is applied over the original color and you get the bottom row. Um, here's dark yellow. Okay, so she goes through all of um, creating new colors by putting a different color over the top. But you can also draw inspiration for color palettes from this. Then you can try it yourself. 
says work in layers to create different tonal values. Build up the tones by adding one, then two, then three layers to the different sides of the pencil. Write the color name or number underneath each filled in pencil. So for instance, this is a mix of violet and blue for shading. This is a mix of greens and yellows. So you can come up with your own color palettes and then write them down underneath. So she's got a couple pages of that. Here is where she talks about the color spectrum or the color wheel as we kind of know it. She talks about the primary colors, the tertiary, secondary, um, yeah, the secondary, tertiary, which is the colors in between um, the primaries and secondaries. Um, so yeah, it takes you around the color wheel, talks about the primary, secondary, and tertiary, warm and cool colors, complementary colors, which are those that are right opposite each other. Talks about extending primary hues by adding, you know, for instance, more yellow here. Oops, I think we skipped a page. Talks about tone. Then another try it yourself page. Then bringing it all together. So she um, has you combine a whole bunch of things that she previously talked about. And then trying it yourself again. Then we get into chapter two. So that was everything that was in chapter one, the how to section. Um, here we find out how to color. So here, I thought this chapter would be especially interesting. Um, many of us know some of the stuff in chapter one. Not everything though. I'm definitely going to read through that also. But this is what I thought would be really interesting, not just for myself, but for many of us. If you want to learn how to color the eye, she takes you step by step through coloring eyes. I mean, is she not stunning? And continues on with the eye. Look at that. That is just gorgeous. Then we, she goes through different shapes and colors. Like, look at this rainbow colored eye. Isn't that pretty? Different types of expressions. Then you get to try it yourself. You can put down some of your colors used. Then we get to noses. Goes through... You know, different shades and colors used, different, you know, how to complete coloring in a nose. Then you get to, again, try it yourself. Then she goes through all the same steps for lips, which I always wanted to learn how to color lips better. Lips with teeth, which would be interesting to learn also. You don't always see teeth, but there are times you do. And I know I have struggled with that. Lip shapes and colors. Look at the rainbow lips. <laughs> and again, you can try it yourself. Then we get to skin tones. Here we have the pink toned skin. She gives you some suggestions um, down here. Light flesh, dark flesh, light magenta, Indian red, walnut brown, and white. And if I remember right, um, the brand of pencil that she's using in here is Polychromos. I believe that's what I read in the description. I don't I kind of skipped over things in the front, so it probably stated it in the front, but I think she is using polychromos in here when she refers to specific colors. It takes you step by step. You know, take the Indian red, do this. Take the walnut brown and do this. Lastly, use the white pencil to blend. So, you know, again, she takes you step by step. Here is yellow tone skin. Gives you the colors she uses. Again, step by step, how to, yes, it is polychromos. 
um, how to color that skin. Here we have brown toned skin. Again, step by step. Then you get to try it yourself. Again, write down any colors you use if you want to try something different than what she gives you. So you can try each one of those skin tones. Then we get to hair. Um, we all, you know, well, many of you may know already how to color hair nicely. I don't. I kind of do, but not well. So here we go through blonde hair again, giving you colors to use. Step by step. Isn't that pretty? Then you can try it yourself. Then we have a brunette. Step by step and trying it yourself. Then we have with the braid ombre hair. Oh, that is just gorgeous. Love it. Isn't that pretty? Oh, again, try it yourself. And then we have shape and color. It says, when it comes to hair, there are endless possibilities. Create different styles such as updos, braids, ponytails, and bunches, and go wild with color. Why not experiment with dip, dyed ends, or all over rainbow hair? And we do do things like this on like our mermaids and things like that, don't we? <coughs> So then we get to the last chapter and it's called My Favorite Things. So she goes through feathers. Again, it gives you colors down here, which is, you know, nice because I think feathers are hard. <laughs> They're hard to do. Again, can try it yourself. Then fur, which is the other hard thing to do. And again, gives you colors to try step by step, even how to do the mouth here. And again, try it out yourself. It says, remember that each spot should vary in size and shape to keep the leopard looking natural and realistic. Then flowers. I just love this picture. Stunning. Tells you how to do roses. And here we have, must be, what is it, a lily, yeah. The lily, and again, all the colors that she uses. Here are the rest of them. Then we have the tulip. And then trying it all yourself. And that is the end of the book. And yeah, she says, thank you, Faber-Castell. So they may be sponsoring this. Um, or she's just thanking them for their awesome pencils. <laughs> and then she gives credits in the back of the book. So there you go. Isn't that a great all-encompassing book about colored pencils. And like I said, I know there are others out there. I just thought I liked the way she went through it all with the specific colors of the polychromos that she uses. Now, if you don't have polychromos, um, say you have one of the more budget-friendly um, brands, just look at the color, you know, that she has in here and grab something that's comparable in the set that you have, whether it's Crayola, whether it's, you know, Sergeant Art or, you know, whatever, whatever Castle Art, um, whatever brand pencil that you have. So, well, I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing this book. I will leave a link to it. It is uh, down below in the description. It is from Amazon. I am an Amazon affiliate. So if you buy through that link, I do make a few pennies on that purchase, which goes directly back into the channel. So yes, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you're new to my channel. I hope everybody's having a great day. And as always, happy coloring. Bye guys.